Hi, brothers and sisters. I just want to read some passages here from Deuteronomy. This is a heavy word. Um, If you're only reading Deuteronomy as a history book, historical account, you will miss the warnings in Scripture for the wicked and perverse generation in the latter times. I'm going to start with Deuteronomy chapter 28. In the beginning of the book, the Lord makes promises to those who obey him and follow after his commands. And then the warnings come quickly after that, starting in verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then in verse 20, The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with the consumption and with the fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Is this not what's happening now? And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. I'm going to turn the page. And the, verse 27, the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch where else thou cannot be healed. 28, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, that thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled every more, and spoiled ever more, and no man shall save thee. And he's talking about blindness. There's also a spiritual blindness. And I'm going to confirm this when we go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. This is exactly what we're witnessing in the world today. All of these people who do not know the Lord, these are the things that are happening. Even people who profess to know the Lord, there is some type of spiritual blindness over them that they are not understanding the signs of the times or what is happening in the world, especially as it relates to this abomination. I'm going to keep going. Verse 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long con- continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness, every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked off from the land whither thou go to possess it. And then we're going to go to chapter 29. And these continue. And let's go in verse 19. And it came to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he blessed himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And I don't have to go through the scriptures to tell you that God does not change. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book, this book of the law. And you understand what it means to be grafted in and to be grafted into the Lord's children, grafted into the promises made to Israel. So this still applies to us today, these warnings. Verse 22, 
so that the children to come of your children that shall rise up after you and a stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown nor beareth nor any grass groweth therein like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Admah and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto the land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. They went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring it upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. Don't mind my children. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Is this not happening today? There are people that are saying the reason why these things are happening is because people are not following after the Lord. Even the deception that's happening among so-called professing Christians, Christians whose hearts have turned away from the Lord. This is why you're seeing Christians being struck with blindness, running after this abomination because they do not know or obey the ways of the Lord. This is what is happening now. Okay, well now we're going to go on to verse, uh, chapter 32. The wicked and perverse generation. Starting in verse 5. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. And I want to go to, oh, verse, seven, verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Verse 19, And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And verse 20, And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation children in whom is no faith is this not what we're seeing today professing believers who have no faith in god are running out to get this wicked abomination that was created using sacrifices to molech verse 21 they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not god they have provoked me to anger with their vanities and i will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people i will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation for a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and the terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into the corners. I would make them the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Listen to this. This is the wicked and perverse, the, the perverse and crooked generation. In verse 5, he says in verse 28, For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Verse 29, Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Verse 31, for their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone, there is none shut up or left. 
2 Timothy 3, 5. The Lord says that people will have, the Lord says through Paul when he wrote to Timothy, that people will have a form of godliness, but denying its power from such people turn away. This is talking about people who profess to belong to the Lord, who are not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. God's saying here he's going to bring judgment upon these people. For the Lord shall judge his people, not judge his not people, his unbelievers. He will judge his own people and repent himself for his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine and their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. What are you seeing now? professing believers, trusting in the government and trusting in this abomination to protect them from this plague or pestilence that's in the land. They have no faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no faith in the rock of the Lord. God is bringing this judgment upon them. This is what he says. See now that I, even he, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. This is the Lord speaking. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, my hand take hold on judgment. I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of the revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. If you're saying that the Holy Spirit is telling you that this abomination is not what we know it is, you better test the spirits. If you're telling people, God is going to be totally okay with this. There were people sacrificed to Molech to make these abominations. God is not changing. It says in Matthew 10, starting in verse 34, Think not that I came to send peace on the earth, but I came to bring a sword, to set at variance. Mother, against daughter, father against son. People's enemies shall be members of their own household. He is splitting people. It also says, anyone who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. We have to stop loving our family and friends and people that we know more than we love the truth and telling people lies. We need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. If someone is blind to what's going on, read Deuteronomy and find out and beg God for understanding and mercy and wisdom and clarity and discernment in this last hour. The worst and most dangerous thing we can do is give people words that we're saying are coming from the Lord when the word says that God will judge his people and bring judgment they upon them to. because they did not follow and obey him. We have to obey the Lord over all. We have to obey his commands and be very careful to tell someone, if you're hearing from the Holy Spirit, particularly about this abomination and telling people, oh, it's not the mark. You better be 1,000% sure the Lord actually told you that. And you're telling people it's not because if pressure gets too high, they may decide, oh, well, if it's not, I'll just go ahead and take it because this person said the Holy Spirit said God's going to forgive people for taking this. You better be very careful saying that you're speaking on behalf of the Lord. When the Lord says that his people are walking without power, there's no power in them, and he judges them, and this is a wicked, perverse, crooked generation where there is no understanding or that they would understand their latter end.